Hi, I'm Mr. C, the teacher, and this is my classroom. Over the years, I've created hundreds of lessons in every subject area. That's tons of topics to teach. So grab your tools for school and join in with us, or sit back and just watch. And let's go on a learning journey together, because you're watching Lessons from the Classroom. take a look at what the topic for today's episode is going to be about. In today's episode, we're going to talk about a subject at school that's well, fairly new. It's been around for a few years. We refer to it as ADST. Oh, what's that? That stands for Applied Design Skills and Technology. And that can consist of all sorts of things from using tools as simple as a pair of scissors on paper with some glue, to using tools such as hammers and saws and screwdrivers, to doing coding, whether we're using little robots to code or whether we're using an iPad app or program to do some coding. Applied design skills and technology simply means using our brains to design something and then using our skills to build it. Let's take a look at some examples. In coding, if I were to start from the very beginning basics, I could use little program cards like this. And I could say that I want to make a program where a character, say my dinosaur here, is going to follow my set of instructions. I want my dinosaur to step forward, step forward again, take a left turn, step forward again, which means he's now moving in that direction. Take a right turn, and then step forward again, which means he's going back in that direction. Step forward again. Maybe take another right turn. Step forward again, which means he's going in that direction. Step forward again. Maybe take a step backwards, and then turn right, which means he's going that direction, and step forward, which means he's going that way, and then step forward again, take a left turn, which means he's going to go sort of that direction, and then step forward as he walks off the screen. So there I've set up some programming. So here I've set up a program using very basic code. If I were to get my character to follow that code, then we can see that he would step forward, step forward again, turn left, step forward, turn right, step forward, step forward again, turn right, step forward, step forward, step backwards, Turn right, step forward, step forward, turn left, and step forward as he makes his way off our screen. If that was a computer code, it would be very similar to some of the apps and websites that do this sort of thing. In fact, we'll show you an example of that. So there are a number of coding programs that you can find online or on apps for your tablet. This particular one is quite easy to use. We're going to create a new program here. We can get rid of this little character by just putting our finger down 
getting rid of it. So what we can do is we can select a background from a bunch of choices. And we can select a character from quite a lot of choices. Characters don't have to be people. They can also be objects, like a soccer ball, for example. And when I tap on a character, it highlights it, and it puts the character down here at the bottom of the screen. And then I can just simply drag and drop different pieces. I can also change the number for how many steps the character might take. I always want to start my program with this drop and drag green flag. That's my go flag. I can also split my coding apart as well. When I want to code my other characters, I just tap on them and drop and drag what I want to have done. Now anytime I want to test out my program, I can simply hit the green flag and see what everything does. I can also enlarge in the picture as well. If I want to change anything, I can pull it apart and I can just throw it away. Or I can scrap everything. So if I look at my coding for my fairy, when I hit the green flag, she's going to move four steps forward, say hi, stop, wait 10 seconds, move up screen for two paces and shrink, then move up screen for two paces and shrink, move up screen for four paces and shrink. And I've given some shrink codes of two, two, and four. So hopefully what it'll look like is she's walking off into the distance. At the same time, I've also got Cat doing exactly the same. I want to add a second background. So I'm going to tap here, and I'm going to get rid of our Cat for the moment. Choose a background. This time I'm going to choose a city scene. And now I'm going to put my two characters in there. Make my character quite a bit smaller. So I want my character to start off looking smaller. Of course, I always need my green flag to start. I'm going to get my character a little bit off screen here, too. And I want my character to walk maybe about six paces. And then to go a pace in. I'm trying to get them to maybe come to this door or this door and then look like they're going to go inside. I want to do the same thing with my other character, the fairy. Start her way off over here. Green flag to start, always. I think I also want to add a car in as a character. Let's add this one. Appear on the road. And of course we need it to start when the green flag comes up. We need it much smaller. Go this way, maybe a good eight paces. Hi, Cat. Hi, you want sure to get thing. some ice cream? I love ice cream. Bit of a video going, but it needs some more work. We can see how doing some basic coding will give us an animation. All right, let's have our B-Bots put on a dance performance. In order to do that, we want them both to move at exactly the same way at the same time. So we have to do some careful programming using our grid. 
Let's say we want them to move forward one square. And then turn. And then move forward. Let's get a little bit of music going. Now let's watch them dance. Three, two, one, go. Well, it looks like I've got plenty of art supplies and tools on hand, so I guess it's time to do some quick art creations. Now this particular toy is called Code and Go Mouse, and just like the Beebot, he's got some arrows here in which to code him to make him go in different directions. But he also comes with a track and a few other obstacle things to put on the track. Let's quickly build up a track and we'll show you. Alright, so we've got our track set up and we've got our mouse. We want our mouse to move forward from this first square into this square. Then turn and go up to this square. Turn and go over to this square. Turn and go up to that square. Turn, go underneath the orange tunnel here and get to the cheese at the very end. So to code him, we have to put him in a start position. We have to think where we want him to go. We want him to go forward, turn, go forward, turn, go forward, turn, go forward, turn, go forward once, twice. Let's see if we've coded him correctly. Where's that cheese? I can smell that cheese. Cheese, cheese, cheese! Yay, he got to the cheese. We coded him correctly. Love you, cheese. You know, I love being surrounded by great books. Because one of my favorite things to do is to read stories. So, let's make some time right now and read a storybook. This is story time. <laughs> Someone Builds the Dream by Lisa Wheeler and Lauren Long and read by Mr. C, the teacher. All across this great big world, jobs are getting done. By many hands in many lands, it takes much more than one. An architect creates a space. She'll draw, redraw, measure, and trace. A woodsy, warm, and peaceful place. But 
Someone works to guide the saws, plane the logs, lead the team. Someone needs to pound the nails. Someone has to build the dream. To engineer a bridge takes skill. Math and science fit the bill. And eye beams ordered from the mill. But someone works to mine the ore, smelt the iron, pour the beam. Someone needs to weld the steel. Someone has to build the dream. An artist makes a stunning plan, a masterpiece from mind to hand, a fountain both unique and grand. But someone works to dig the trench, lay the drains, solder seams. Someone needs to plumb the pipes. Someone has to build the dream. A scientist earns a degree in physics and ecology. He aims towards cleaner energy. But Someone works to tighten bolts, steer the cranes, drive machines. Someone needs to raise the tower. Someone has to build the dream. Park designers sketch with pride amusements and amazing rides, and sights to keep you mystified. But someone works to run the wires, light the lights, make them gleam. Someone needs to bury cables. Someone has to build the dream. An author thought up something new. The illustrator planned and drew to make this book for kids like you. But... Someone worked to set the text, run the press, load the reams. Someone had to make this book. Someone had to build this dream. All across this great big world, there's lots of work to do. It takes a team to build a dream, a skilled, hard-working crew. So when you see a bicycle, playground, house, or shoe, remember all the someones who helped make a dream come true. In this coding game, we've got a little wooden robot known as Cubetto. He has some wheels. And we have a coding board or programming board. We're going to add some pieces into these slots that give us code or directions to move our robot. In this case, 
I want to move our robot from spot B up to the tree. I have to get him there safely, but there's a few rules. He cannot go in the water, he cannot make his way through mountains, and he needs to avoid the dinosaurs. So if I'm starting here, I want to give him directions to go forward, forward, turn right, go forward, turn left, go forward, turn left, and make his way across and down to the tree. All right, so I've put my program into the master control board there. All we have to do is press the go button and see if it'll follow the instructions, which should say forward, forward, turn right, forward, turn left, and then go to the function button, which is over here. Function button is telling it to go forward three times, forward, forward, forward. Then go left, and then go back to the function button again, which means go forward, 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 turn left, and go forward. And I should be at the tree. Let's see what happens. Another great device for applied design skills and technology is something like a marble run. Plus, they're great fun to play with. Oh yeah! time in our show and we have a segment I like to call questionable letters and that's where a viewer writes in to ask us something let's see what today's letter is going to ask questionable letters all right well let's look at today's letter that came in from one of you viewers it says dear Mr. C what is the coolest ADST project that you know about from Abigail Danica Samantha Thompson P.S. I love your show. Hey, thanks, Abigail, and it's a great question. And I noticed that the initials, the first letter on each one of your names here, Abigail with A, and then your middle names, Danica and Samantha, and your last name, Thompson, well, those initials spell ADST. Ha, what a coincidence. Well, the coolest ADST project that I know about, it's gotta be Copenhill Building. It's in a city called Copenhagen, and it's, a huge building that's actually made for collecting your waste, your garbage, and burning it. And what they do when they burn that garbage is that it turns into electricity and heating for 90,000 houses in Copenhagen City. But here's what's really cool about the building. Rather than just being a big, ugly building, what they've done is they've actually made hiking trails that go up the building and a ski hill that you can ski down in the building even during the summer because it has that green carpeting. There's also a climbing wall on the side of it. So it becomes a building with a function where people can go hiking and skiing in a city that, well, frankly, is really quite flat. They don't have any hills or mountains. Plus, it's a building that has a use to it because it takes the trash, the garbage, and it burns it and turns that into electricity and heating for houses. But it also doesn't pollute. It has special filters that takes the smoke from burning all that garbage and it turns it into water vapor. So it's non-polluting. And what's really cool is that on a colder, foggier day, that water vapor coming out of the chimney actually turns into snow on the ski hill. To me, that is really cool. Applied design skills and technology. That's engineering at its best. I hope to go there one day. Copenhill Building in Copenhagen. Cool. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, Mr. C here. These students have been involved in a bit of ADST in making something that we call gravity cars. Regarded as a classic, a real beauty. So let's talk a bit about your gravity cars. And well, first we gotta let them know what's, what does ADST stand for? Uh, applied applied design, design, technical, technical skills, technology. technology. I think I got most of it there, applied design. design so you had to skills, design a car technology. and you had to use your skills to add to this car, build this car. And the technology, you guys know what kind of technology you use? Because yeah. we're not talking computers, right? Yeah. What are we talking about? Uh, like physical, like uh, physics Newton's and three laws. Newton's three laws. Yeah. Ouch. Physics. Physics and like. And you actually use some technology in the form of tools. And most people will go, well, like computers? Yeah. Oh, no. oh what's he doing? Is he miming a hammer? Oh. Oh. Physical. Right, yeah. So sometimes technology can be something as simple as a pair of scissors or a hammer. Uh huh. Or uh -huh. Yeah, sure, Mr. Z. Uh -huh. So let's talk about these gravity cars. Now they all look the same. Why? Why are they like all we out of the all... same material, same size, same design? Uh, so because they had to be exactly the over like below 600 milligrams and they had to be exactly 12 inches wide so there and is a length so, yeah. so there's a length and a height yeah. and a, a weight yes. a weight 600 um, grams you had to be under you had to be under 600 or grams. Or you had to be exactly under Yeah. So, so Eloise, were you trying to get as close to 600 grams because that made yeah. the car better? But not not necessarily. It depends on how you made it. Because I have one of my friends, she same design and everything, but she only had one nail at the very back. And hers, she almost got to the final six. I know, so when you're doing it, you want to keep um, most of the weight on the back. So yeah, that's yeah, more, more down if, force. Yeah, so yeah. if you have it all like, yeah, jam-packed on the front, you'll it'll just... It will, well, and also, really? when it's done, and also when it's done, it goes down the whole thing, and then there's a little part, which is still part of the race, where it goes flat. <laughs> and if it's all at the front, um, it's, that car is done using all its acceleration, but if it's on the back, part it of it still has, still more, has acceleration. more acceleration. Oh, so it can give it a little boost at the end, and then your car sometimes picks up at the end. So the there's end. a real strategy to whether they're at the back, or yeah. whether they're at yeah. the front. Anybody find out whether it's better to really drill the nails as low as possible because uh, you know they're standing out yeah. i like keeping mine down more away from it. also a uh, plus from it not being at the front is it helps with the aerodynamics because yeah. there's not a lot of stuff with the air like eh. it didn't closer, the air. closer together yeah. and, really bunched yeah. together and it was behind this, in behind so, yeah, so you it didn't affect the aerodynamics because it was back then. so what we're hearing here is applied design figuring out where these nails are going to go makes all the difference even though the cars are the same size the same construction the same materials the wheels are the same and in the same place it's the nails that make all the difference for making a faster car or a slower car now i also noticed they've all got the same wheels and it looks like the same wheel distance and i i have heard in past competitions that they actually allowed you guys to choose where you were going to drill the wheels. I don't think they did that this year. This time it was in the same exact place. This time it was in the same place. Okay, we do have some film of the cars actually racing, so you can see the, the starting gate, you can see the length of the track and the height of it, and where it goes to. We'll show you that in just a moment. All right, well, thanks guys for coming and being interviewed and yeah. talking about your gravity cars as part of ADS2. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. you're welcome, thanks. All right, let's take a look at some racing. Well, thanks for joining me, and I hope you learned something new and had fun doing the lessons. Join me next time on another episode of Lessons from the Classroom.